My name is Mo. I'm here to present you our work, Performance Oriented Congestion Control. Uh, this is a collaborated work with my colleague Ching Xi Li, my advisor Brian Godfrey, Doran Zarki, and Michael Shvira from uh, uh, Hebrew New University of Jerusalem. So, TCP is an Asian topic. TCP was introduced about 30 years ago as a solution to the congestion control problem. As the network evolves, there are many, many different TCP variations that get introduced into this field. So it is a very legitimate question to ask that uh, who cannot be happy with TCP? There are so many of them. Just choose one to use, right? Well, all these company names that are popping up on my screen now are extremely not happy with TCP. Why do I know that? It's because uh, they are all customers of one or another companies that are providing this kind of uh, high-speed uh, high data delivery services. Their own satisfaction is so real that it is creating a very lucrative market. One company providing this kind of service is anecdotally making 10 to 20 million dollars in revenue in 2013. That is about a 400 million dollar company right there if you consider a 20 times PE ratio. Now, we also share with their own satisfaction with TCP. If you take a step back and look at all these variants of TCPs, it, the very fact that, that there are so many of them indicate that each of them is just a point solution. So it improves the performance under certain network scenario, but still breaks in others. And what, what's worse and even more important here is that even in the network scenario they are specially engineered for, these TCP variants are still always performing far from optimal as we found out in the experiment. So it reaches this very unfortunate conclusion that uh, even with so many years of excellent research pouring this field, TCP still fails to achieve consistent high performance in challenging and real network conditions. Why it is so hard? There must be something fundamentally wrong inside of a TCP's architecture. So what is that? On the screen uh, now, I listed some example of, sorry. On the screen here, I listed some example of TCP's congestion control algorithms. For Reno, we have one packet loss and we'll half the congestion control window by two. For scalable TCP, if we see an uh, acknowledgement, uh, the congestion control window will just uh, uh, plus one. For cubic, if time passes one millisecond, the congestion control will increase a certain value. So what all these seemingly different uh, congestion control algorithms in common is that they are all hardwired mappings uh, of uh, some packet level event and uh, uh, read, read control actions. So this is a, really the TCP's architecture here. No matter what kind of uh, TCP variants you're designing, at the end of the day, you're basically filling in this form. You choose what kind of packet level event you care about and what is uh, the hardware uh, read control action you want to hardware it to. And at runtime, what TCP does is basically table lookup. So it do some action, read control action, and send packet to the network and see some packet level, level event and looks up in the table and find the next action to do and uh, looks up in the table again, find the next action to do and uh, so on and so on. So there is this uh, hardware uh, mapping uh, between the packet level event and action. Now the interesting question is to ask a TCP, why do you hardware some packet level event into certain read control actions? Well, TCP will answer you that, well, because I assume that uh, if I see this particular packet level event, uh, the network must be in certain state and therefore I should take this action to improve my performance. This assumption works well if the real network is indeed the same as the assumed network. However, in many real world cases, uh, the real network condition will actually deviate from the assumed network condition and the, the corresponding hardware action here is actually a mismatch and therefore the performance will, will actually degrade. Now let's, let me further illustrate that point with a simple example here. Let's say flow F is sending at rate R and uh, it sees that it is packet loss as a packet level event. Now, under TCP's form filling architecture, what should we hardwire this packet level event to? It really depends on the uh, network condition, right? So if F is causing most of the congestion, it probably should decrease the rate a lot. However, if uh, the packet loss is just because of a shallow buffer overflow, it should uh, uh, probably just uh, decrease the, the rate a little bit will be fine. And uh, if uh, there are other higher rate flow that is causing most of the congestion, to gain fairness, uh, it should maybe maintain its rate. Now, what if the loss is just a purely random loss to uh, touch the link capacity, it should instead increase its rate to touch the link, link capacity bound. So it becomes clear that uh, a single packet level event can be a result of a different uh, network conditions. And under each of the different network conditions, optimal action can be different. 
And therefore, it is fundamentally hard to find a event control mapping that is optimal for all network scenarios, which is basically what TCP is trying to do here. Now, this is why TCP's architecture is broken. And let's clean slate here and rethinking uh, this very simple question here. What is the right rate to send to achieve consistent uh, high performance? And let's think this problem from a different angle of TCP. Let's don't make any assumption of the network and just treat the, net the network as a black box. What can we do to a black box system? We can do experiment. So we, we try some rate and we get some outcome. And uh, uh, within a short time scale, we can try many different rates and we get many different outcomes. Now, what is a good rate to sign is basically whatever the rate, whichever the rate that makes uh, uh, the sender happiest. Now, how do we define uh, a rate that makes uh, the sender happiest is by looking at uh, the, the result of the uh, particular sending rate. So as we send a packet to the network with a particular sending rate R, let's say, the network will give us some feedback, basically selected basically describing which packet get received and which packet get lost and what is the latency across the network. However, different from TCP, we don't trigger any predefined hardware action at this point. We aggregate those packet level events into meaningful performance metrics like source port, loss rate, and latency. And further, we aggregate those meaningful performance metrics with a utility function, which basically describes the sender's objective of data delivery, the happiness score, if you, if you may say. So uh, for example, I want high throughput and a low loss rate in this particular case. Now, what we get now is a one set of experiment. We know that no matter how complex the network is, if we do something like this, we know when we send rate at rate R1, we will get utility U1. Next thing, what we do is just to do like simple science. So we send at rate R1, we get utility U1. We send at rate R2, we get the utility U2. Then which rate is better to send, R1 or R2? We just uh, do simple comparison of utility U1 and utility U2. If utility U1 is larger than utility U2, we will just move to R1 and vice versa. So this is really the architecture of performance-oriented congestion control, PCC, we are proposing here today. So it is uh, observing the real meaningful performance of its particular sending rate and control its sending rate based on empirical evidence that which rate is really benefiting uh, the, the, the utility. And therefore, it, it can yield consistent high performance because no matter how complex uh, the underlying network is, it can always, uh, uh, it is always trying to move towards a direction that actually improves its performance. So let's come back to that example uh, of F, uh, flow F is sending at rate R, and let's say R is 100 megabit per second. Now, under PCC's architecture, we treat the network as a total black box. So what we will do is uh, we will try a lower rate of 98, and we'll try a higher rate of 102, and we will compare the utility. Now, if the, uh, if the network condition is that this flow is causing most of the congestion, what we'll get as a result of the resulting utility is that sending and 102 will have a more loss rate and similar throughput, and therefore lower utility, and PCC will decide to in decrease the rate to 98. However, if the loss is purely random, uh, sending at 102 will give you a higher throughput and a similar loss rate, and therefore higher utility, and it will, move, uh, it will actually increase the rate to 102. So you can see in this very simple example how PCC is effectively adapting to survive under different network scenarios. Now here is a flash of uh, our performance result, and we'll I will talk about uh, uh, some of them later in the evaluation section. So, what we talked about just now is the architecture of T uh, PCC. There is a concrete implementation under that ar architecture that I don't have, really have time to talk about uh, here today. If you want, you can refer to the paper. There are many, many implementing detail and design decisions there. So what I want to talk about here now is uh, a little bit more about how PCC makes a decision where to move when it doesn't know where to move. So let's say PCC is standing at rate R and uh, uh, doesn't really know uh, where to move. So what it will do is it will try a lower rate and it will try a higher rate. And at this point, uh, uh, PCC can decide, okay, in this case, I will increase my rate. However, uh, the, 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 the performance measurement result can be noisy and therefore the decision can be wrong. 
Therefore, we introduced something called randomized control trials, which basically, whenever PCC is trying to make a decision, uh, we do this two set of A B testing randomly, and if their result is consistent, we will move towards the decided direction, and if their result is inconsistent, uh, we will increase the guessing gap and guess again. This actually gave us better st stability and reacting to this trade off, but we don't have time to talk about uh, uh, it here now. Now, it seems that we are omitting an elephant in the room here, which is uh, where is congestion control in this whole picture? It seems that what all PCC is doing now is uh, each PCC center is just uh, trying to selfishly maximizing its own utility. However, uh, fortunately, what, what, what this uh, kind of uh, selfish uh, interaction form a non-cooperative game in game theory? Now, the question of whether selfish PCC senders can voluntarily convert to a single uh, stable and fair share point is, to, is the same to answer the question, do we convert to a fair Nash equilibrium uh, in this game? Now, whether we convert to a fair Nash equilibrium in this game depends on the utility function of choice. So we found a class of utility function that can all uh, convert to a fair and efficient Nash equilibrium. A very intuitive one is this. So let's say uh, the sender's utility function is throughput minus the sending rate times lo uh, observed loss rate. Basically, I want high throughput and low loss rate. Now, the problem of this utility function is that, uh, uh, as we found in the theoretical analysis, that as the number of senders increases, the convergence point move, move towards a point that everyone will suffer from 50% loss rate, and we don't want that. Therefore, we introduce this uh, sigmoid function that here basically cut off the global sending rate uh, by, a, by a percentage, in this case 5%, which basically push back the convergence point from the 50% uh, loss to a very low loss rate, and uh, no matter how large the number of uh, sender is. Now, uh, you, can, you can kind of see that the PCC's dynamic is totally different from TCP's dynamic here. What, what is TCP's dynamic here is that uh, uh, it needs this kind of AIMD as a hack to achieve asymptotic fairness. Let's say we have a flow, uh, start, uh, first flow starts then and touches the link capacity and the second flow joins. What will happen in TCP is that the first flow will have its rate and uh, continue to, to, to do this additive increase. The interesting observation here is that uh, the first flow, you, uh, you can see after it does uh, uh, half its rate, is actually moving away from the convergence point. And the PCC dynamic is totally different. PCC doesn't need any AMD because it looks at uh, the real performance. So the same scenario, the first sender comes in, touches the link capacity, and second sender joins. Now, as soon as the second sender joins, the convergence point immediately becomes a high ground of utility value. Now, the two senders will be pushed by this game theory force to voluntarily always uh, converging to that high utility point, which is uh, actually the convergence point. Now we did an experiment to evaluate with a typical dumbbell topology convergence ex experiment with four flows coming one after another with 500 seconds interval and 2,000 second flow uh, duration each. We set this up uh, on an MLAB test bed with 100 megabit per second link and 30 millisecond RTT link. And you can see that uh, uh, very distinct uh, uh, very distinctly uh, TCP is a uh, uh, rate is violating Sorry, TCP rate is varying very wildly as uh, uh, it achieves the uh, asymptotic fairness, but uh, you can see that PCC's convergence is converging very uh, stably, and uh, th there are only some oscillations uh, uh, around the convergence point. Now, to make PCC real, we need to think about how feasible it is to deploy PCC widely. Though as a significant architecture shift, the PCC actually doesn't need any hardware support, packet header changes, protocol changes, uh, or any of this. In terms of where to deploy PCC, uh, the a very natural place to start is uh, somewhere like CDN backbones, interdata center networks, or dedicated scientific uh, network, data delivery networks, which uh, where uh, PCC can fully replace TCP or be fully isolated with TCP. Now what about in the wild? What if uh, I just want to use PCC uh, in the internet today? It really comes down to the question of TCP friendliness, and it is very legitimate to ask, is, TCP, uh, is PCC TCP friendly? Well, we believe this is actually the wrong question to ask, because PCC as an architect architecture doesn't carry any TCP friendliness property, on, uh, property at all. So the TCP friendliness property is actually embedded in its, again, utility function. So, PCC's default utility function is indeed not TCP friendly. However, it's not that bad. 
So we compare the aggressiveness of a single TC, a PCC flow using its default utility function with a number of parallel TCP flows and find that it is similarly aggressive as a 13 parallel TCP flow, which is actually used in IE11 as default. Now, if you really want to achieve a single flow fairness, uh, diff you can choose actually different uti utility function to achieve that. We have some preliminary results showing that uh, if we introduce latency uh, in the utility function, uh, it can actually be TCP friendly and in fact in many cases dominated by TCP uh, across uh, 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 various uh, different uh, network scenarios. However, that is uh, an important uh, area of future work we need to fully explore. Now. Let's come back to where we started and fulfill the promise of a consistent high performance. We implemented the TCP, uh, sorry, we implemented the PCC in user space uh, under, uh, on top of the, like the TCP skeleton of UDT architecture and evaluated it across a large range of network conditions. So we evaluated it in an emulated satellite network condition and shows 17 times higher throughput than TCP high block, which is actually used in satellite network communication today. And we further evaluated its performance under lossy network condition and shows 10 times throughput achievement, uh, performance improvement uh, than TCP Illinois. And uh, uh, we also tested it in a shallow buffer network condition uh, where it needs uh, 15 times less buffer than TCP uh, cubic, uh, and uh, which basically can serve a possible solution of a uh, buffer bloat. If you can achieve a, a high performance with small buffer, you can just uh, put a small buffer everywhere uh, without worrying about latency. Now, we also tried the intra data center scenario under INCAST and the rapidly changing network we will, I will talk about in detail later and under uh, the scenario of, of RTT fairness because uh, PCC really doesn't uh, have this coupling between RTT and its control. It's, uh, it is really controlling based on the real performance. So it can be a cure of the RTT fairness problem. And we also tested the PCC uh, in the wild with uh, inter data center network condition, uh, inter data center across internet to backbone network and with provision bandwidth, and it achieved four times higher throughput uh, compared to TCP Illinois, and 23% uh, improvement uh, compared to UDT, which is actually widely used in today's scientific de data delivery networks. And finally, we, we throw PCC in the wild in the global commercial internet and tested the performance and shows uh, uh, great gains that we will talk in detail later. So, I will pick some example of uh, those performance evaluations and talk in detail here. So uh, we, we, on Emulab, we set up an uh, emulated uh, sat satellite network condition with uh, the real link characteristic from a wind system, uh, wind satellite system. So it is a, a 42 megabit per second link with 800 millisecond RTT and approximately uh, 0.74% uh, pa packet loss. And we, uh, the access here is uh, the buffer size at the bottleneck uh, uh, router. And the Y access uh, is a throughput it uh, can achieve over 100 seconds of uh, data delivery. Now you can see that even TCP Hybla, which is actually used in data, uh, satellite uh, data delivery, is uh, still 17 times uh, uh, far away from PCC. Now another interesting scenario we want to talk about here is a rapidly changing network condition. So we set up a, a network on Emulab again uh, with bandwidth, RTT, loss rate, all changing uniformly, randomly distributed across uh, all these listed value here every five seconds. And this, gra uh, this, this, this picture here shows uh, uh, the optimal rate you can achieve, uh, uh, basically the optimal, the, the optimal link rate you can achieve. And uh, uh, here I show TCP Illinois and TCP Cubic here. Uh, the TCP Illinois, the, the dash, the blue line here. You can see that TCP Illinois is in fact doing better than TCP Cubic. However, they are all far from optimal. Finally, we uh, bring in uh, PCC and you can see that you cannot even tell the difference between the red line here and the blue line here that PCC is always trying to, uh, tracking very closely to this uh, uh, kind of a challenging and a changing network condition. So finally, the, uh, another interesting uh, result we want to talk about is uh, the com uh, global commercial internet uh, uh, scenario. So in the, we set up 460 sending receiving pairs across global, uh, across planet lab nodes and genie size. So we send data using TCP for 100 seconds and we stop, and then we send, P send data using PCC for 100 seconds and compare their average throughput. 
So here is some uh, uh, interesting example here that uh, what, what's the time you take to deliver 100 gigabyte of data between some uh, interesting site here. So this is the time you need to use uh, to deliver 100 gig gigabyte of data using PCC. And this is the time you need to uh, use uh, to, to deliver this amount of data using TCP cubic. And this is actually the time you need to just uh, take a disk and uh, uh, take a flight out there. So. Uh, this is uh, the, the performance, uh, 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 this, this is the real CDF here. We can see that for 44 times, 44% uh, of uh, uh, the sending receiving pair, PCC is gaining more than 10 times higher source food. Now, it is very legitimate question to ask that whether this performance gain is merely due to the fact that we are using default receive function that is not TCP friendly. Therefore, we did another experiment to compare the default utility function also with a more friendly TCP friendly utility function. And we can see there are some result inflation there, but not much. So we further dissect the result and shows that uh, in inter intercontinent links, uh, the gain is much more than intracontinent gain, which concurs with, with our uh, as our, which concurs with our assumption that uh, intercontinent link uh, tend to be more uh, complex. Now there is still this question of whether we are doing every tuning of TCP and uh, trying to help TCP as much as possible. Okay, let's uh, let's forget forget about that and look at a, a totally non-TCP solution here. So we can also compare it again with UDT, which actually shares a, a large amount of a code base with uh, the prototype implementation of a PCC uh, on this uh, uh, scenario with a, a relatively smaller scale experiment uh, and uh, shows 48% uh, percent improvement in median and at the same time four times lo less loss rate and we can see the uh, behavior is very uh, relatively more stable using PCC. So there is a long list of things we have done but don't have time to talk about. There are more stories of uh, uh, TCP is broken and there is a proof, uh, full proof of a uh, natural equilibrium and convergence that is coming out in our archive version and there is a concrete implementation of PCC and uh, a long list of uh, performance evaluation we skipped here is actually 11 more. And more importantly here is that we are kind of uh, omitting an uh, architecture benefit here which is uh, uh, we can use uh, the same read control algorithm and you can plug in different utility function and achieve flexibility uh, that can never be achieved in using TCP architecture. So basically you can uh, uh, use, uh, you, you can achieve a, a low latency or uh, you can choose between latency sensitive and source pool sensitive. There are of course some limitations in the future works. There are, we need to understand the utility function and the convergence better. Uh, we need to design better control algorithm and the better scalability of the software. As of now, uh, we have uh, uh, initiated, uh, we, ha we have started looking into uh, Quicks architecture and uh, uh, try to see if there is a possibility to push PCC uh, into Quicks exten extensible congestion control architecture. I would like to thank uh, uh, Ian Joe from Google uh, for helping us on that. Uh, there are some related work I want to talk about, uh, but uh, it seems that uh, the time is constrained. Yes, all right. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, we propose a rate uh, uh, PCC today, which is a rate control based on empirical uh, observed performance that yields consistent high performance, better stability than TCP, and a flexible performance objective, and it is relatively easy and safe to deploy. So, uh, I guess with that, uh, I'm ready to take questions. Uh, and the, uh, the code is published on GitHub. And if you want to see a demo uh, of uh, PCC running live, uh, please find me after the talk. Howdy. I'm Ari Rabkin from Cloudera. Uh, thank you for that talk. It had a lot in it. Uh, something that I maybe didn't follow or that you didn't get at. If I'm an app designer, I might have some utility on bandwidth. I might have some notion of how much better the user experience is with, you know, one marginal kilobyte per second. What's the relationship between my utility function as an application layer programmer and the utility function that PCC is using to optimize what to send? Uh, I think that is a very good question. And uh, uh, the, sur the short answer is we don't have a clear answer for that now. Uh, because the, the performance utility function PCC is using, as you can see, is basically using this matrix of the source pool and uh, loss rate and latency like directly, some, on, uh, some uh, relatively low level information here. However, the application may care about something different and how to transfer that uh, through the application layer uh, is something we are looking at now. Thank you. Hi. One more um, All right. One more question. Um, so, I mean, this is really cool work. Obviously, it works really well. The question is why? Um, and I, I was trying to understand why. So. Um, 
did you try uh, schemes like scalable TCP that you know do exponential increase, uh, for instance? Uh, is is that the main reason uh, why? I mean, basically, from what I saw, you're basically increasing exponentially the rate. Uh, is that the fundamental reason why you're doing so much better? Uh, no, uh, that's actually not. So uh, PCC is making this decision in using MIMD. However, it is a, a really doesn't really matter that much, like uh, wh whether we're using AMD or not. So the essential architecture of PCC is that it is comparing two performance here. So this performance is better than that, and therefore I should move towards that rate. So no matter uh, it is using AIMD, MIMD, AIAD, or AI, I mean, I, MIAD, it, it really doesn't matter because uh, it, it, is, it will always go to the direction that yeah, improves. Yeah, of course it matters because the speed at which you move matters, right? AIMD can't keep up on, on, on long fat pipes, like you know, the satellite link. So. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, I think I can take that offline with a yes, demo, it will be more intuitive. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thanks.